Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. on gun barrels or flamethrower barrels or anything that gets really hot from repeated use. So uh, the way this works is you're going to use some blues and purples and a little bit of brown and we're going to work in layers with some glazes and things like that to get that overall transition to make it really pop at the end of those gun barrels. We'll be using royal purple from Viejo Model Color. I've got a silver, it's the Air uh, Model Air version, uh, but any silver will work. I've also got Game Color Sepia Ink and game color magic blue. If you don't have these exact colors, just pick something fairly, fairly close. They'll work just fine. I've also got my palette. I've got some distilled water, brush soap, and some paper towels to keep my brush free of uh, contaminants and, as I work. So here's the model. We'll be uh, using this, this uh, hover tank here. I've also got a uh, number one low and Cornell uh, round brush. It's uh, basically, it's a, it's a dollar or two dollar brush at Hobby Lobby. So I've got my paints in the palette now. I've got my blue, purple, and sepia. And what I'm doing is adding water to get it thinned out. I'm not thinning anything any more than I normally would for a base coat or if I was going to start layering. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you can see how I like to add water to my paint to get a decent thin consistency, but not so thin that the paint runs away. And you can see I kind of check with the end of my brush to see how it kind of flows back into the, the pot or the end of the end of the basin there. Uh, just to get an idea of how thick it is. And you want it to kind of slowly crawl back, and as you can see, it starts to get translucent and slowly move back as it crawls back. And that's what I'm looking for personally. Your preference and your paints may differ. So we'll start out with the blue. Uh, you want to do a little more blue than you normally would, and the reason is, is that we're going to cover that up. Oh, before I forget, I also I base coated the gun barrels with silver, and that'll help make it pop. You can start with a gun metal or something darker, but you'll have to work more to get it to be as bright. And since you can always darken it much easier than you can brighten it, I just like to start with a with the silver. So that's what I use that silver for, and I didn't show that step. So I'm just working a nice smooth coat from the, the very end uh, and tip of the barrel, and then just kind of picking my way back, trying to keep it smooth and fairly consistent. And again, we're going to cover a decent amount of this with some of the purple and then we're going to come back and highlight with a little bit of silver and blue. So you want a larger blue area than any of the other two areas. So now we're going to move into the purple and it's basically I'm just picking where I want the transition to start. So I definitely am obviously going to hit where the silver and the blue meet so I start there and then I just kind of work it and I, I let my my eye catch what I think will look good. So, and that's what you should always be striving for when you paint is whatever you feel looks best. Uh, these are a little smaller barrels if you're starting out and just learning how to, to do this or practice, especially if you're working with new to working with glazes and things like that. Start on something a little bigger if you can or practice on something just to get an idea of how the paint is gonna move and how uh, you can hold and secure the miniature and keep control of the paint and not uh, get it, get carried away and, and uh, make mistakes because no one no one wants to get frustrated with this. So now I'm just kind of gently working it in. Uh, because I'm only using water to thin the paints, it's going to dry fairly quickly. I'm not using any glaze medium or retarder in any of these, uh, and except that there may be a little bit in that ink. I'm not sure if Vio has retarder in that ink, um, but uh, I'll show you how to take care of that as well later. All right, so that purple, now that I know it's dry, I can go right into this brown. The brown ink is basically, it's like a wash. Uh, I didn't add anything to it, as I said before, but I'm going to work very very gradually and the reason for this is I want to kind of move the paint I don't want to put too much on because if I do I will end up uh, potentially getting those those tide marks or coffee stains as they can be referred to where there's kind of a ridge line of, of paint and it doesn't transition well it doesn't give you uh, what you want especially if it's on the silver it's gonna look it's gonna look odd so I'm just using a little bit here and there just working it back and forth it's it's a much thinner paint that the pigment for an ink is is not like a paint it's much finer it's more of a stain if you will so i'm just looking to be careful and not add too much on there and then once i'm once i'm happy with where it is or if i need to stop 
I'm gonna set it down because it, it does need to dry. If you start messing with it, it's you're gonna end up lifting some of that paint. It doesn't adhere the same way as the paint does. So just keep that in mind as you're working with inks or if you're using a wash instead of that ink to, to do that. So now I'm just going back and I'm waiting for that brown to dry. I touch up the blue a little bit in a couple spots, maybe to get a little more vibrant. Uh, and now we're gonna get into some of the blending and glazing. So I've taken a couple brush loads full of blue and one of the purple and I've made a, a mid blue purple tone. And that's gonna be my transition to get rid of that hard transition line between the blue and the purple. So I'm, I'm looking to keep it fairly thin. I even added a little bit more water to it because now I want it to be more like a glaze. So I don't want it to be like that original base coat. And now I'm just taking the tip of my brush, just gradually adding just a little bit of that pigment. And I want to let the paint do the work. I don't want to try to work with it too much. I just want to let it go right on that line between the blue and the purple and let it do its thing. If I try to push it too much, I risk putting it over the blue too much or over the purple, uh, which isn't, isn't as bad, but I, you know, I still want that vibrant purple. So uh, just do a little bit, see how it does. You can wait, let it dry. Uh, if you're happy with it, if you want to add a little more, if you want to brighten it up a little bit, maybe you went too dark or too light. This is how I like to think about uh, what I'm doing when I'm glazing, because if you try to get too much of a rush and you don't let the paint dry and you try to get everything done all at once, you'll end up being frustrated and you're, you end up, you're end up working the paint a lot more than letting the paint work for you. And that's not what we want to do with this. So now I'm going to give a little bit of purple, a couple brush loads of purple while that blue, uh, blue purple is drying. And I'm going to add a little bit of that brown ink to it two brush loads to one there and then I'll probably add a little bit of a uh, yep, little bit of water right there at a droplet of water there and you can see I've made something fairly thin so which again because it still has that ink in there uh, or if you're using again a wash medium you're gonna want to let it dry more so I'm just gonna get a little bit on my on my brush and I'm going to pick up that line between the brown and the purple now it's darker and it doesn't show up on camera as well it's harder to see but you'll be able to see it when you're working on it up close uh, what I'm doing is trying to get that that purple to a darker purple to the kind of smoothly roll into that into that brown um, you know aged uh, metal look and I'll admit my transitions on here to the from the brown to the silver were probably a little bit too too sharp so I ended up making a little more work for myself so if I had to go back and do it again I would have brought that brown out a little further but I also would have made sure it was thinner I kind of had a darker edge that kind of was abrupt that went to the silver so uh, learn from my mistake and you can see here I'm, I'm trying to make up for that by adding thinned brown and I'm going to let that dry again and now that because there's a transition there and because it's that medium I'm going to need to let it dry for a little bit and I don't want to mess with it too much so I'm just kind of dabbing instead of using the brush so that I don't lift the brown pigment that I've already put on there I don't want to be too forceful and aggressive with it because it will basically just come right off of the silver or off of the brown that I just put down and then I'm not making any progress I'm just moving wet paint around and it's not going where I want it to go. I'm just adding a little bit to the base there to get uh, some of that silver a little bit more of that aged look like I would normally do for just a regular wash. All right now I'm going to go back in with some silver and I'm going to take a dab of blue and put that down and I'm going to mix in a, a dab of silver and I'm making a blue silver and what I'm doing with this is we want the ends, the ends of those barrels to pop and the very very end of the barrel should be slightly brighter uh, typically that's how it'll end up looking so now I'm just going to take that very very last edge and I'm just putting a little bit on those spots to have a, a blue silver so it'll be a nice transition from the blue but it's really going to catch your eye and as you can see it already looks really good it looks like it's you know catching the, the light the way you would want a a true metallic color to do so not much work but it's already adding a lot to the overall effect that we're trying to achieve with the heat heat effects here must have found a spot here that i needed to touch up some purple and if it gets a little too dark here and there um, as you've added your paint you can always go back to those base colors and touch them up a bit or if you need to brighten them you can always add a little bit of a, maybe a lighter purple or you can even add it just a touch of white um, to give yourself something to build back up if you want it brighter I kind of like the darker subdued effect just because I think it looks more natural but again you know do what makes you happy and do what you think looks cool it's gonna look cool regardless because you've got a lot of a, a lot going on on an otherwise basically plain stainless steel barrel 
So because I added that purple, I'm gonna go back with that transition blue purple and just kind of hit it real quick. It's still wet, so I'm gonna have let the paint do the work and just kind of merge together. But again, I'm not doing too much with the brush because these are, I'm working with those glazes and I don't want to ruin the nice fades and the nice uh, joined transitions that I've got so far. So I'm letting it dry just a little bit. And the reason for that, again, that I keep stating is that I don't want to lose progress. So I'm not, I don't need to let it sit for a long time. But I do want to just give it, you know, a little bit of a chance to, to start to cure up. Since I hadn't worked on that brown in a little bit since I had added that, that base wash, I'm coming back now and I'm adding that, another layer to get from that dark brown to that light brown silver and get that just that little bit of a transit smoothness in between the two. And again, I'm using just a, a dabbing motion so that I don't knock any of the darker pigment off and I don't wipe the lighter pigment away clean and end up with a bright silver spot. Just kind of finessing the paint. It'll mostly go where you want it to go in this, in this instance. So again, I don't want to work too hard because I don't want to backtrack and have to repeat a bunch of uh, layers again just because I got impatient. You can make these transitions as, as narrow or as wide as you'd like. I just thought it would look neat to cover the, you know about three quarters of these machine gun barrels and still show a little bit of that silver so we get a little bit of the visual you know, catches your eye from the the tip of the, the blue to the back where the silver is, and then you obviously your eye is drawn to that to that cool heat effect. A little bit of touch up. Well, that just about finishes it up. You can see it's a really good looking result. It really makes your miniatures pop and stand out on the battlefield. Thanks for watching. Visit us on camospecs.com, our Facebook page, Camospecs Online. Post your comments or questions on the YouTube comments. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.